Chapter 136, Cave of Youthful Passion The two tongues continued to be entangled in Xiao Yan's mouth while wave after wave of pleasure continued to invade Xiao Yan's heart. The strength used by his arm grew as if he was attempting to merge the woman in his arms into his body. Following the growth of the flame of desire in him, Xiao Yan was in a daze as one of his hands involuntarily climbed onto Yun Ji's narrow waist. It flowed slightly before passing through the black robe and touching the smooth and delicate warm jade-like skin. As their two bodies made such an intimate contact, both Xiao Yan and Yun Ji trembled slightly. With his breathing becoming ragged, Xiao Yan slowly shifted his hand upwards. A moment later, he actually grabbed her soft peaks. With the woman's most sensitive part being invaded, Yun Ji, who had lost her mind to the flame of desire became slightly awake. Her face became white when she felt their intimate posture. Like lightning, she parted with Xiao Yan, clenched her silver teeth and whispered with great difficulty, Yao Yan Yu, if you dare do that to me, I will kill you when I recover my strength in the future. Yun Ji's voice carried a faint numbness due to the flame of desire burning in her, but the serious words carried a slight crying sound. Like a heavy hammer, Yun Ji's words heavily smashed onto Xiao Yan's head and immediately helped him escape the control of the flame of desire. Feeling that his hand was actually holding a private spot, Xiao Yan's face turned purple as he hurriedly remove it. He viciously circulated the dou qi in his body as he struggled to suppress the writhing flame of desire. When Xiao Yan was suppressing the flame of desire in him, Yun Ji's consciousness was once again conquered by the flame of desire. Her arm hugged Xiao Yan's waist as her cheek repeatedly rubbed against Xiao Yan's chest. Just as her consciousness was about to fade, however, a crystal clear tear fell from Yun Ji's beautiful eyes. An unclear voice escaped from her attractive red lips, Yao Yan. If I lose my body to you, I will first kill you then myself. The crystal clear tear flowed down her face, finally landing on Xiao Yan's chest. The cold feeling caused a bitterness to surface in Xiao Yan's mouth. Sighing lightly, he asked in his heart, Teacher, stop playing dead. How can I undo the effect of this thing? Ha ha. This is a really good opportunity. This woman likely enjoys a high status in the Jiama Empire. If you, Yao Lao's joking laughter sounded in Xiao Yan's heart. Stop fooling around. She's not the type of person who would just leave with anyone who had her body. You heard her just now, if I really took advantage of her, I will be the first person to be killed after she wakes. Xiao Yan bitterly laughed as he shook his head. He lowered his head and saw the red-faced hazy-eyed noblewoman before whispering, I can feel that she is not joking. Given her character, I'm afraid she'll really do it. Ugh, what a good opportunity. Yao Lao sighed a little regretfully and helplessly said, Gather your dou qi in your hand and massage the acupuncture points on her lower abdomen, thighs, and just below her neck. You should know the exact location of these places very well. Ugh, the corner of Xiao Yan's eyes twitched upon hearing these places. Why were they all spots where women were most sensitive? Teacher, you better not be fooling around. This involves my life. Wiping off his perspiration, Xiao Yan smiled bitterly and said. However, Yao Lao remained silent after Xiao Yan's question. Being left with no other choice, Xiao Yan clenched his teeth, bent his body and carried Yun Ji's lazy waist before placing her on the stone table. By then, Yun Ji's clothes were already partially removed, exposing a large portion of her naked body and presenting an extremely glaring sight. Xiao Yan only became more miserable. Not only did he have to suppress the writhing flame of desire in him, he had to act as a saint in front of this half-naked beauty. Xiao Yan took a deep breath as he slowly extended his hands that were covered with dou qi. Facing the barely conscious Yun Ji, he whispered, I'm sorry. After saying those words, Xiao Yan no longer hesitated. His hands quickly pulled apart the black robe on Yun Ji's body, stopping only when half of her snow-white chest was revealed. Xiao Yan was not distracted as he extended three fingers and slowly rubbed on a spot below her neck and half an inch above her breast. Following the dou qi entering her body, 
the flushed redness on Yun Ji's face ceased spreading. The seductive moan from her nose had also weakened. Seeing that it was effective, Xiao Yan's spirit spiked and Dou Qi hurriedly poured into his hand. After massaging for a few minutes, Xiao Yan's gaze shifted downwards and paused on Yun Ji's lower abdomen. Xiao Yan sighed when faced with this sensitive zone before he continued to part the black robe. This time around, the act of parting the black robe caused those pair of pert breasts to lose their covering and not only exposed its nakedness to the air. Swallowing his saliva, Xiao Yan fingers touched the calm lower abdomen and began to lightly move. Such an intimate touch naturally caused Xiao Yan's heart to swing. As the Dou Qi was transferred through the spot on the small abdomen, the redness on Yun Ji's face also subsided. Her pink-colored neck also began to gradually return to its normal whiteness. After massaging her abdomen for a few minutes, Xiao Yan hurriedly pulled the black robe back up. Next, he began to lift up the black robe that was over Yun Ji's legs. Xiao Yan did not dare to act impudently at such a spot. When he lifted it sufficiently, he quickly found the right spot and closed his eyes as he used his Dou Qi to ease the flame of desire in Yun Ji. When Xiao Yan had his eyes closed, Yun Ji, who was lying on the bed, tightened her hand. Her long eyelashes continued to quiver as an expression of shame and anger repeatedly flashed on her face. A moment later, Xiao Yan was drenched in perspiration as he finally removed his hand. He pulled the black robe downwards and panted roughly. Turning around, he found that Yun Ji's face had returned to normal and let out a sigh. During the moment when Xiao Yan sighed, the Dou Qi in his body that was greatly exhausted from helping Yun Ji suppress her flame of desire almost allowed the flame of desire in him to surface again. With a red face, Xiao Yan bent his body slightly and watched the defenseless beauty lying on the stone bed. He involuntarily stepped forward and lowered his head to watch the tender, beautiful and seductive lips. A fire flashed across his eyes before he slowly lowered his head. Feeling the closing breath, Yun Ji's hands also began to tighten. Just as Yun Ji was preparing to retaliate, the closing breath did not move any closer to her face. After a brief silence, a clear sound of a hard slap sounded in the cave. When the sound died off, the hot breath had slowly distanced itself. The sound of staggering footsteps gradually left the cave. Only when the sound of the footsteps vanished did Yun Ji shake her eyelashes and opened her eyes. Seeing the slightly disordered black robe on her body, another tear fell. Although she was clear that the most frightening thing did not occur, Xiao Yan's massage was no different from seeing all of her naked body. With her position, there was almost no one who dared to be impudent in front of her, much less randomly touching her body. Thinking of how her first kiss which she had preserved for so many years was snatched away by a boy much younger than her in this cave, Yun Ji felt a crazy desire to cry but no tears appeared. Having lost her Dou Qi, Yun Ji appeared less cold and unfeeling than she usually felt. Her unreachable position also seemed to be temporarily sealed in the deep recess of her consciousness. Had this occurred in the past, Yun Ji would not hesitate to pull out her sword and cut Xiao Yan into 18 pieces. Of course, had her Dou Qi not been sealed, the effect of the aphrodisiac that Xiao Yan had randomly put together would not have been able to cause Yun Ji to feel even the least bit dizzy. Lying on the stone bed, Yun Ji bit her red lips. Her face was constantly flipping between brightness and gloominess without anyone being able to comprehend her thoughts. After running out of the cave, Xiao Yan crazily dashed towards the waterfall a short distance away. The spreading flame of desire in him had caused his body to feel like a burning charcoal, he continued running for some distance with his red face. The rumbling sound of water soon entered his ears and the moist air that pounced onto his face caused Xiao Yan to feel a little more comfortable. Plop! Upon seeing the lake appearing in his eyes, Xiao Yan jumped into it like a fish. His body sunk to the bottom of the lake, allowing the cold lake water to pacify his hot body. Xiao Yan took out an energy recovery pill from his storage ring and threw it into his mouth, incidentally taking in a few gulps of lake water. Then, at the bottom of the lake, Xiao Yan crossed his legs and began allowing his Dou Qi to circulate and began banishing the flame of desire. 
with the provocation from the water and the gradual recovery of his dochi, the heat on Xiao Yan's body began to recede, the writhing flame of desire in him also began to slowly disappear. Plop! A human head suddenly erupted from the calm lake surface as Xiao Yan wiped the water that adhered to his face and raised his head to watch the sun hanging high in the sky. He weakly let out a breath and slowly swam towards the edge of the lake as he repeatedly took in gulps of air. Xiao Yan's narrow eyes stared at the sky when he suddenly licked his lips. The noble and beautiful face of Yun Ji once again appeared in his eyes. The originally noble, female godlike existence had revealed her most seductive and depraved posture to him. Xiao Yan shook his head as he laughed bitterly in a soft voice. He knew that regardless of what happened in the future, she would always hold a place in his heart as the one who gave him his first taste of a woman. Ugh, sighing without any reason, Xiao Yan climbed out of the lake and carried an uneasy feeling as he slowly walked back to the cave. As he was about to reach the cave, Xiao Yan took in a deep breath. He softly mumbled, she should have woken up, right? Holding his own hand, Xiao Yan opened his stride and walked into the cool cave. He directed his gaze to the stone platform and became stunned. Yun Ji, who was supposed to be lying there, had vanished. Anxiety flashed across Xiao Yan's face as he quickly took a few steps forward and was just about to shout when his neck suddenly became cold. A strange-looking longsword that carried a no heat was tightly nestled on his throat. His body suddenly became stiff as Xiao Yan's eyes gazed to his back. Wearing a black robe, Yun Ji's right hand was carrying the long sword as she stood behind him with an icy face. Chapter 137, Breaking the Seal The scene inside the cool and refreshing cave was strange and dangerous, a woman held a long sword at a young man's throat. The icy feeling on his throat caused numerous goosebumps to appear all over Xiao Yan's body. He raised his hands and bitterly smiled in a manner that hoped to clear up any misunderstandings. I did not do that thing to you. Hearing this, Yun Ji's pretty face became a little flushed. In her heart, she thought, you may not have done that to me, but is there any difference between what you have done and that thing? A glint appeared in her beautiful eyes but the long sword in Yun Ji's hand did not make the slightest movement. She shifted her gaze and saw the very red hand print on Xiao Yan's face. Evidently, that was the spot where the slapping sound in the cave had originated from. Staring at the somewhat comical-looking handprint, the iciness in Yun Ji's eyes became a little warmer. A long while later, she let out a dejected sigh and weakly withdrew her long sword before walking towards the interior of the cave. When she passed Xiao Yan, she said blandly, We will just pretend that whatever happened today did not happen. Otherwise, if the story spreads, it won't be beneficial for you. Standing on the same spot, Xiao Yan eyed Yun Ji's graceful and attractive curves from her back before closing his eyes and releasing a bitter sigh. Indeed, such things ought to be forgotten. Compared to her status, he was like a toad that sat at the bottom of a well. Even though the toad had managed to become intimate with the swan because it had fallen into trouble, the vast sky was ultimately where the swan truly belonged while the toad would only be able to stay in the well, staring at the sky. Do Huang, a divide that was very difficult to surmount. Maybe Xiao Yan would have the opportunity to step over it but at the very least, it would not be now. This proud and noble woman would also not believe that a young man with only the strength of a doja would be able to achieve that level. Xiao Yan may have talent but that did not mean that he would be able to become a Doha Wang. A dream leaves no traces. Xiao Yan shook his head and whispered as he followed Yun Ji further into the cave. Watching the cold-faced Yun Ji who had shut her eyes as she attempted to break the seal, he shrugged his shoulders. He sat down at a corner, closed his eyes and began training his Do Qi. Following the quietness of the two, an awkward and embarrassing atmosphere descended into the interior of the cave. It appeared that the pair had difficulty returning to the harmony of the past few days. The silent atmosphere persisted until noon. During this time, Xiao Yan went out to catch a few fish and was absent-mindedly sitting beside the fire and rotating the wooden rod. His heart suddenly became aware of something and lifted his head, only for his gaze to clash with a pair of livid beautiful eyes. 
the two gazes met and instantly shifted away, acting as though nothing had happened. Xiao Yan rotated the grilled fish once more before extracting one of them and handing it over to Yun Ji. You can eat it. I'm not hungry. Yun Ji lowered her head as she softly said. Just as she said those words, she felt her abdomen contract. However, she remained stubborn, closing her eyes and ignored her stomach's protest. Relax. That thing has already been disposed of by me. Seeing that Yun Ji's refusal to receive the fish, Xiao Yan could only smile and utter a cold joke. Yun Ji opened her eyes, pressed her lips closely together and lifted her head only to find a young man with a warm smile beside the fire. A softness flashed in her eyes. It was undeniable that this delicate and handsome look of Xiao Yan's along with his age gave others the impression of a harmless person. Only when she stared at the grilled fish did Yun Ji recall that this entire incident started because of the fish that she had grilled. The young man in front of her had simply faced an unexpected misfortune. Although this unexpected misfortune was something that any man would love to experience. Letting out a sigh, Yun Ji extended her hand and received the grilled fish in front of her. Her small mouth opened and was about to touch it when the Xiao Yan suddenly called, Be careful. It's still a little hot. Hearing Xiao Yan's words, Yun Ji could not help but become distracted. She immediately gave him a supercilious look and said, Which Do Huang have you seen cared about this little bit of heat? Xiao Yan gave an embarrassed smile, grabbed a grilled fish and gorged it down. With small bites, Yun Ji slowly transferred the fish meat into her small mouth and began to relax. Perhaps because of the caring words that Xiao Yan had said out of the blue. She swallowed the food and said softly, I should be able to break the seal by tomorrow. Xiao Yan's large chewing motion suddenly paused and he swallowed the things in his mouth. He sighed. For some reason, he had the feeling that when Yun Ji once again regained the strength of a Doha Wang, the pleasant relationship that they had would be broken. In the future, she would continue to be the superior Doha Wang she was while he would still be an ant that was fighting to become a Doshi. It would be difficult for the two to ever interact again. Thinking to this point, Xiao Yan began to feel that the fragrant grilled fish had become tasteless. In a few bites, he finished eating it and vaguely said, Really? Congratulations! After recovering my strength, I will once again go and find the amethyst winged lion. Appearing not to have felt Xiao Yan's mood, Yun Ji continued her own conversation. I hope that you would continue to be sealed by it, the sentence suddenly came from Xiao Yan's mouth which was busily chewing the fish. Hearing the words, Yun Ji's eyebrows straightened. She angrily threw the grilled fish at Xiao Yan and lashed out, You jinx! What are you saying? Xiao Yan flipped his hand and caught the flying grilled fish. He saw the small teeth marks on it and grinned. He began to bite at it in a manner that suggested he was handling a treasure of sorts. Watching Xiao Yan holding the grilled fish which she had eaten from and repeatedly biting from it, a bright red color faintly appeared on Yun Ji's face. She softly spat, eat it. Let it choke you to death. After finishing the fish, Xiao Yan burped before tilting his head and asked, This may appear like nonsense but I still want to ask. Do you want my help? After hearing Xiao Yan's words, Yun Ji became silent and actually nodded her head. Seeing the dumbfounded expression on Xiao Yan's face, she explained softly, The purple spirit crystal is usually placed in the amethyst winged lion's cave. The previous time, I had intended to sneak in but it discovered me. When I recover my strength tomorrow, I will once again distract the amethyst winged lion. As for you I hope you can enter the amethyst winged lion's cave and help me seek the purple spirit crystal. It won't be a problem providing help, but, it may be shameful to say this but as a doja, any rank 3 magic beast that appears in this inner region of the magic beast mountain range would be able to easily finish me off. Xiao Yan laughed bitterly as he waved his hand. You need not worry about this. After I break the seal tomorrow, I will use a secret technique that would allow you to gain some strength for a short duration. With this strength, you should be able to enter the inner regions of the Magic Beast Mountain Range. After all, 
seldom does magic beasts enter the cave of the amethyst winged lion. Yun Ji said. Xiao Yan slightly nodded his head. Put this crystal on. As long as you are near the purple spirit crystal, it will become hot. You will just need to rely on its temperature to find the purple spirit crystal. Yunji removed a dark green rhombus-shaped crystal from her storage ring and handed it over to Xiao Yan as she spoke with a smile. Xiao Yan received the crystal and hung it around his neck. Then he lifted his head, he smiled, I will do my best. Watching Xiao Yan's smile, Yunji slightly inclined her head. Having said all that needed to be said, the two no longer had any topic to converse. The atmosphere once again became silent. Go and rest. I still need to train for a little while. Xiao Yan broke the silence and threw Yun Ji a smile. He sat cross-legged on a stone platform at the side, closed his eyes and entered into a training mode. Seated on the stone bed, Yun Ji stared at the young man with a handsome face for a long while before she lightly sighed. She slowly lay down and mumbled to herself, Go to sleep. Once you wake tomorrow, you will forget everything. A long while after the stony cave was silent, the closed-eyed Xiao Yan who was in training suddenly opened his eyes. He turned his head and watched the sleeping beauty, Yun Ji, lying on the stone bed. Slowly getting off the stone platform, he came to the bedside and swept his gaze over the elegant and attractive curves. Finally, his eyes landed on the beautiful face with a slightly knitted eyebrows. Xiao Yan's gaze stared intently at this pretty face that he may never get the chance to look directly at ever again. After a moment, Xiao Yan withdrew a huge black robe from his storage ring and lightly placed it over Yun Ji's body before turning around and walking towards the cave entrance with the large heavy Xian ruler on his back. Night was the time when the magic beasts were most active so he needed to maintain watch at all times. When Xiao Yan turned around, the closed-eyed sleeping Yun Ji abruptly opened her eyes. She quietly looked at the disappearing back of a figure carrying the strange-looking black-colored large ruler. Her hand caressed the black robe covering her body and within her serene heart, unknown ripples had begun to rise. Ah, a soft sigh from within the cave slowly died. When the warm dawn shined upon the sleeping Xiao Yan, his sleepy eyes began to open. At the moment he did so, he suddenly and swiftly turned his head around. Yun Ji was sitting cross-legged on the stone bed in the cave. The strange-looking long sword was placed on her legs. Today, she had changed into a snow-white plain dress and her originally lazy-looking phoenix hairstyle had once again been gathered together, giving off a faint noble feeling. Her beautiful face was calm and elegant, leaving no trace of the weakness that she had the last few days. Appearing as though she had felt Xiao Yan waking up, Yun Ji's eyes also opened. Her beautiful pupils swept towards Xiao Yan as she faintly asked, Awake. The voice was as clear as it had always been, but this time around, it carried a little coldness. The indifferent tone was similar to that of a conversation between strangers. After sweeping his gaze on Yun Ji, Xiao Yan slowly sighed. He tilted his head and asked, The seal, is it broken? Yes. Yun Ji nodded emotionlessly and moved her body slightly. When she next appeared, she was standing right in front of Xiao Yan. She lowered her pretty eyes, stared at Xiao Yan's face and said, Let's get going. Once we are outside, I will help to temporarily raise your strength. Once she finished her sentence, she turned around and led the way towards the exit with her alluring and graceful footsteps. Lifting his head, Xiao Yan watched the back of the beautiful figure leaving the cave and suddenly said, I like the Yun Ji of the past few days. I don't really like the Yu now. At the cave exit, the beautiful figure stilled. She stayed at the same spot for a moment before once more opening her stride and exiting the cave. Chapter 138, Joint Operation As the sun stood at the apex of the sky, Xiao Yan looked up to gaze at the graceful and slender figure that stood atop a huge rock. From the horizon, sunshine poured out, spilling itself onto the figure and adding a faint layer of radiance to the already glorious spectacle. At present, Yun Ji's appearance looked similar to when she had battled with the amethyst-winged lion while Xiao Yan had hidden to one side and watched, 
filled with grace and nobleness. The haughtiness from her pure and cold demeanor had a way to cause others to feel ashamed of their inferiority. As if sensing Xiao Yan's gaze, Yun Ji unhurriedly turned around and lightly raised her eyes to meet the gaze of the pitch black pair of eyes. Soon after, she quickly turned them away and informed him in a dull tone, I will let you possess a doshi level of power for a short period of time and since I am of the wind attribute, your speed will be amplified quite a bit. If any magic beast tries to obstruct you, try your best not to fight it or else the sounds of battle will draw even more magic beasts to you. If that happens, I'm afraid you will, at this point, Yun Ji suddenly stopped and slightly turning her head, she stared at Xiao Yan. N. Eyelids droopy, it seemed that Xiao Yan did not hear the implication within Yun Ji's words that she had accidentally let out, he only slightly nodded his head. Gazing at the look of serenity on Xiao Yan's face that surpassed even her own, without knowing why, Yun Ji's eyebrows slightly knitted together. A short while later, she floated down the huge rock, appearing at Xiao Yan's side and then softly asked, Shall we start? Okay. Seeing Xiao Yan's nod, Yun Ji's jade like hands slowly stretched forward before lightly pressing against Xiao Yan's back. With a light tap of her fingers, a turbulent Dou Qi energy ferociously poured into Xiao Yan, and instead of rebelling due to the foreignness of the body, the Dou Qi meekly flowed through Xiao Yan's channels under the control of Yun Ji's will. The flow of this vigorous Dou Qi caused Xiao Yan's body to feel an unprecedented amount of power. Slightly twisting his body, as if he had been reborn, the bones all throughout his body continuously emitted cracking sounds. Tightly clenching his fist, a curious look appeared on Xiao Yan's face, was this the power of a doshi? As expected, it can't be compared to that of a dojes. Casually bouncing on his solace, Xiao Yan found that his body seemed to be much more agile than before, evidently, this should be due to the wind attribute doshi within his body. No wonder those doujes who practiced wind attribute qi techniques were so fast and nimble. This dou qi is enough to last you for two hours. During these two hours, you need to retrieve the purple spirit crystal from the cave of the amethyst winged lion. Yun Ji softly reminded, I will do my best to stall it but you still need to watch the time, that brute's intelligence is in no way inferior to that of a human's. If by chance he realizes something, I'm afraid that there will not be any more chances next time. Okay, shall we leave? Xiao Yan nodded as he fixed his eyes on the soul-stirring complexion of the person beside him and then smiled. Yes. Yun Ji slightly inclined her head and with a slight jolt, a pair of green-colored wings of energy slowly sprouted from her back. Yet when she lifted her head to look at Xiao Yan's action, she was stunned. Though soon after a captivating redness appeared on her good-looking face, humiliated and angry, she chided, What are you doing? Currently in an hugging posture, Xiao Yan's eyes widened when he heard Yun Ji's question. Extremely amazed, he retorted, With such a long distance, you could not possibly leave me to run there by myself right? If by chance I encounter a rank 4 or 5 magic beast, won't my journey prematurely end? With her long eyelashes trembling, a split second later, Yun Ji could only deeply sigh as she grudgingly nodded. Seeing her acceptance, the corners of Xiao Yan's mouth slightly lifted, slowly walking forward, he once again hugged this noble woman into his embrace. Don't try anything funny or else I will throw you off. In her sober state and also having recovered all her power, Yun Ji's tender body slightly trembled as she once again found herself in the embrace of the youngster before her. Slowly breathing in, she forcefully suppressed her nervous heart before she icily threatened. Xiao Yan smiled as he nodded, muttering in a low voice, I have already touched everything I should have. Yun Ji's good-looking face slightly flushed as she pretended not to hear his mutterings, with a light shake. The two wings on her back brought the two people speedily away from the ground and a moment later, they were flying high in the skies. Just as they ascended into the skies, like an octopus, Xiao Yan wrapped himself around Yun Ji which caused her good-looking face to be angered till it turned a tad white. In mere moments, this guy had already thrown her words to the wind, he was super thick-skinned. 
Yun Ji wore an icy cold expression on her good-looking face as she increased her speed to the maximum. High in the air, a green light flashed as their figures already flew over a hundred meters ahead. Oh, right, what star Do Huang are you? Paying no mind to clouds that flew past his ear, Xiao Yan stuck his mouth right next to Yun Ji's tender earlobe as he suddenly opened his mouth to inquire. As his warm breath caressed her ears, Yun Ji's currently flying body violently swayed. A grudging expression flitted across her beautiful eyes as she answered with a dull tone, Three star. Then how many stars is the amethyst winged lion? Xiao Yan frowned as he followed up on his inquiry. Magic beasts don't have a clear star rating but if you want to compare using the likes of Do Skills and Do Qi, it can at best contend against a two-star Do Huang. However, the amethyst winged lion is known for its physical fighting capabilities and can match up with a four or even five-star Do Huang practitioner. Fully concentrating on flying, Yun Ji serenely said, to sum it up, its strength could perhaps be counted as a three-star Do Huang. No wonder after it got close that day, you were defeated so quickly. That guy's melee attack is indeed very strong, the wound on your chest, Xiao Yan nodded his head, as if he had some point in mind. Before he could finish, to his horror, he found his body suddenly drop a substantial distance. He hastily hugged Yun Ji tightly in alarm and lifting his head, he saw her cheeks puff out in anger and humiliation, thus he had no alternative but to helplessly shake his head. Any more rubbish from you and I will really throw you down. Towards this blabbing guy, Yun Zhu had no way to deal with him other than to threaten him. All right, then I won't say any more, Xiao Yan forced a smile as he nodded his head, he was really afraid of provoking this woman, if she threw him down, that would be the end of it all. But, although your wounds have recovered, when I last looked, there were still some ugly scars remaining. Though these unfathomable words blew out of Xiao Yan's mouth like a whirlwind and caused the expression Yun Ji's good-looking face to suddenly grow heavy. Do Qi gradually gathered in her body as she prepared to throw this guy, who kept testing her patience, down. In the future, I will help you compound some medicine that will remove those ugly scars. For such a beautiful woman, leaving these scars would not be good. Each word that escaped Xiao Yan's mouth caused a slight tremble in the depths of Yun Ji's heart. Looking down at the earnest face of the youngster, the gathering Do Qi gradually dispersed, feigning a dull tone, she replied, No need, once I am done here, there will be little chance of us meeting in the future. These words caused Xiao Yan to pause. Soon after, he inwardly mocked himself as he shook his head, looks like he was still wet behind the ears. The other party was a Dohuang practitioner, it was a simple matter for her to obtain pills that removed scars. Xiao Yan quieted down as he finally shut his mouth. On the remaining journey, although Yun Ji had her wish fulfilled and obtained peacefulness, she could not fathom why her heart felt slightly suffocated without the constant cawing of the youth at her ear. Silently, they landed on a messy rock pile. After landing, Xiao Yan extremely conscientiously let go of Yun Ji as his gaze swept over the huge mountain range in the distance. At the top of the mountain range, a massive cave was faintly discernible under the cover of branches. Is that the amethyst winged lion's cave? As he stood behind a rock, Xiao Yan cautiously cast his line of sight towards the mountain top as he quietly asked. Yes. Lightly nodding. Yun Ji's gaze slowly swept across the nearby areas of the cave, her amber-black eyebrows slightly knitted before saying, the surrounding defenses have increased a lot, looks like that guy has increased security. For the high-ranked magic beasts at the cave entrance, I will try my best to kill or injure them. As for you, chose the best time to stealthily slip into the cave. Yun Ji turned her head and warned. Okay. Xiao Yan nodded indicating that he understood. Seeing that all the instructions had been given, Yun Ji felt slightly relieved. Just as she was about to fly off, she leaned her head towards Xiao Yan and said softly, You, be careful, make sure nothing bad happens. With a faint smile, Xiao Yan said, You should also be careful, although I would really like it if you were once again sealed, I still hope that nothing will happen to you. Helplessly shaking her head, 
Yun Ji no longer lingered. The wings on her back shook as her wonderful figure leaped agilely into the air before flying towards the massive cave as fast as lightning. Yun Ji's figure was not concealed, thus when she entered the area within a hundred meters of the cave, continuous waves of animal howls resounded across the mountain range. With a flick of her jade-like hand, the bizarre green-colored sword appeared. Yun Ji's figure transformed into a green-colored light and in a flash she rushed into the dense forests surrounding the cave. Immediately, mournful howls sounded out one by one. Numerous magic beasts fled in panic from the vicinity of the cave, in front of a Doha Wang, these ferocious magic beasts did not display even the slightest bit of fierceness. Human woman. You still dare to appear. Today I will take your life as compensation for my horn. As Yun Ji killed the guarding magic beasts, from within the massive cave dwelling, the amethyst-winged lion's furious roar suddenly exploded through the skies. In the wake of the roar, a brilliant violet light flared out of the cave like lightning before suddenly shooting towards the forest, in an instant, the dense forest was transformed into rubble. The dense forest was wrecked while two lights, one green, one violet, chased each other as they rushed towards the horizon before beginning their violent clash thousands of meters up in the sky. His eyes glanced at the battle high in the skies as Xiao Yan also finally began to move, the solace of his feet stepped off the ground as his figure transformed into a shadow and quickly burrowed into the dense forest before scuttling towards the cave atop the mountain. Quite a while later, as Xiao Yan passed by the dense forest Yun Ji had originally entered and the sight of the lifeless bodies of many rank 3 and above gigantic magic beasts who lay in pools of blood was reflected in his eyes. This bloody sight caused Xiao Yan to smack his lips at Yun Ji's ruthlessness and although the corpses of the magic beasts on the ground might have high-ranked magic stones, Xiao Yan had no time to search. He quickly leapt over these bodies before scuttling out of the dense forest. Out of the dense forests, an impressively massive cave quickly appeared in his line of sight. Chapter 139, Amethyst Lion Birth Essence most of the magic beasts guarding the dwelling's entrance had been finished off by Yun Ji. 2. However, two rank 3 magic beasts at the back were still alive and were uneasily watching the intense fight in the sky. The aftereffects of the battle that fell from the sky caused them to grovel on the ground as they continuously shivered. Xiao Yan frowned as he observed these two rank 3 magic beasts that were lying on the ground tens of meters away from the cave entrance. He quickly took out a bottle of medicinal powder from his storage ring and poured all of it over his body. This medicinal powder was carefully made by him and could hide the scent on his body to avoid detection by the magic beasts which had a superior sense of smell. After making a detour around the dense woods, Xiao Yan climbed up towards the cave entrance, using the rocks as cover. He stealthily came to a spot directly above the cave and stared intently at the two trembling magic beasts. He paused for a second before taking out some soft cloth from the storage ring to tie it around his feet. With this preparation completed, Xiao Yan took in a deep breath before suddenly leaping from a spot just above the cave. He somersaulted in midair and lightly landed on the ground. The moment his feet touched the ground, Xiao Yan bent his body and abruptly shot into the cave's interior. As Xiao Yan's figure disappeared into the cave, one of the rank three magic beasts shifted its gaze over. When it found nothing, it appeared a little uncertain as it looked back towards the battle. Once again, its body quivered under the battle high in the sky. Upon entering the cave, Xiao Yan realized that it was much brighter than he had expected. There were some purple-colored crystals latched onto the surrounding cave walls. These crystal pieces were naturally formed in the cave and would be extremely valuable decorations in the human world. The deep and spacious interior of the cave that was decorated with these purple crystal pieces appeared scenic. Seeing this naturally formed dwelling, Xiao Yan exclaimed, this lion which had gained intelligence really knew how to enjoy himself. Xiao Yan carefully walked in the cave. As Yun Ji had described, there were no other magic beasts within the cave. As he transversed the cave, there was no other sound other than his soft footsteps. After passing through the long cave tunnel for a while, an intersection with two paths appeared in front of him. Xiao Yan knitted his eyebrows together and stared at the two paths. He was silent for a moment. 
Finally, he opened his stride and carefully walked into the path on the left. This tunnel was constantly winding, causing Xiao Yan to make a number of turns. As Xiao Yan walked further into the cave, he suddenly realized that the surrounding temperature was growing increasingly higher. The cautiousness in Xiao Yan prompted him to pause his footsteps. He then wiped the perspiration from his forehead and watched the purple light that was coming from the distant exit. He rubbed his hand and immediately released a long breath. The Dou Qi in his body slowly began to circulate along with the wind attribute Dou Qi that Yun Ji had placed in his body. Once his preparations were complete, Xiao Yan continued to walk forward. Seeing that the exit was very close to him, Xiao Yan did his best to soften the sound of his footsteps. He then stealthily extended half his head and quickly swept his gaze across the spacious interior of the cave. Unexpectedly, Xiao Yan did not find any traces of a magic beast when he swept his gaze across the room. He blinked his eyes. Once again, he observed the room for a good while before reassuringly walking in. Xiao Yan glanced all over the cave as he approached its center. Eventually, his gaze landed on the middle of the cave. There was a meter-high square table-like object formed from the accumulation of amethyst stones at the center of the cave. On it was a purple-colored ball the size of Xiao Yan's head. After staring intently at the purple-colored ball, Xiao Yan suddenly realized that the heat within the cave originated from this thing. Shock filled his eyes. He did not expect that that this thing actually possessed such an enormous amount of energy. His gaze once again swept across his surroundings as he doubtfully mumbled, Don't tell me that this is that purple spirit crystal. But why doesn't the crystal she gave me turn hot? As he spoke, Xiao Yan took out the rhombus-shaped crystal from his chest area, exposing it to the air. Despite waiting for a while, the crystal remained icy cool. Xiao Yan put the crystal away and with a snail-like pace, walked towards the purple spirit rock table. As he moved closer, he felt a faint heat wave hitting him, causing Xiao Yan to once again express shock for the heat energy that the thing contained. Bending down, Xiao Yan fixated his eyes on this mysterious purple ball. A thought struck him and he suddenly shouted in his heart, Teacher! Come out and see what this is! Hearing Xiao Yan's shout, Yao Lao finally floated lightly out of the ring. His gaze swept at the purple-colored ball and instantly raised his old eyebrows. Surprise flashed in his eyes as he softly gasped, This, don't tell me this is the amethyst lion birth essence? Lucky boy! You actually managed to find this. Amethyst lion birth essence? What is that? The unfamiliar name caused Xiao Yan to frown as he curiously asked. Tisk tisk. This is an excellent item, floating in the air, Yao Lao revolved around the purple-colored ball as he clicked his tongue and praised, the amethyst-winged lion is a magic beast with innate talents. Otherwise, it would be difficult for it to become a rank 6 magic beast. When the amethyst lion gives birth, there is an extremely small chance that she would also give birth to this kind of amethyst lion birth essence along with the baby magic beast. As this amethyst lion birth essence stayed within the womb of the Lion King for a long time, it contains an incredible amount of pure energy. As long as the young Lion King swallows this amethyst lion birth essence after it has grown to a rank 4 magic beast, it will be able to immediately become a rank 5 magic beast. Moreover, the purple flame in its body would be stronger than those amethyst winged lions that did not swallow this amethyst lion birth essence. After Yao Lao finished his explanation, he sucked his lips and said, Back then. I did not manage to find it despite breaking into eight amethyst winged lion's caves. Unexpectedly, you managed to find it. Whoa. It is that good. Xiao Yan's eyes instantly brightened after hearing Yao Lao's explanation. He pounced onto the amethyst stone table and grabbed the accompanying amethyst with both his hands. Ah. Uh -huh. An oppressive hiss exited Xiao Yan's mouth just as his hand touched the amethyst lion birth essence. He drew a breath of cold air and hurriedly withdrew both his hands. When he noticed the burnt palms, he quickly took out some healing medicine and applied it. With a shock-filled face, he said, What a high temperature! How do I take it away? Haha, <laughs> the temperature is naturally high. 
Additionally, this amethyst lion birth essence has already become stuck to the amethyst stone table. If you want to take it away, you must dig it out of the cave. Yao Lao gloated. Dig it out. Hearing this, the color of Xiao Yan's face turned ugly. He swept his gaze under the amethyst stone table which extended into the ground for an unknown depth. With just him alone, he would not be able to get it out even if he dug for a few years. Noticing that Xiao Yan's gaze was directed towards him, Yao Lao shook his head and smiled, Don't look at me. I may be able to take this thing away, but it would cause a large amount of movement that would attract the attention of the amethyst winged lion outside. Moreover, even if we did take this thing away, you would never be able to open this amethyst lion birth essence. What do you mean? Xiao Yan quickly asked, unwilling to lose a treasure that was in front of him. Other than swallowing it whole, the only other method is to forcefully smash this amethyst lion birth essence and harvest the amethyst essence within it. But for some reason, it is difficult to smash it open with outside force. Uh, it means that the other shell of this thing has some sort of engulfing ability. Any attack would be swallowed by it. Yao Lao waved his hand and explained. Swallow it whole. The corner of Xiao Yan's mouth twitched as he eyed the purple-colored ball the size of his head. Forget about its high temperature, its very size meant that Xiao Yan would not be able to swallow it even if he stretched his throat till it broke. What can we do? Since you were searching for this back then, you must know of a method right? After vexing for a while, a thought struck Xiao Yan and he turned his head around to ask Yao Lao. Indeed. Simply relying on brute force would not open this thing. There is only one thing that can achieve it. Yao Lao said mysteriously. What is it? Xiao Yan hurriedly asked, his eyes filled with happiness. Ha ha, Yao Lao smiled and abruptly diverted his gaze to the rhombus crystal that Xiao Yan was wearing around his neck. This crystal? No. You mean the purple spirit crystal? Xiao Yan blanked before he came to a realization. Correct. Only the purple spirit crystal can smash open this thing. Yao Lao nodded, extremely pleased with Xiao Yan's reaction. Then what are we waiting for? Let's find the purple spirit crystal. Hearing Yao Lao's words, Xiao Yan turned around and ran. The purple spirit crystal was obviously not present in the place, it should be in the other tunnel. Oh. That's right. I forgot to warn you that since an amethyst lion birth essence is present, then, there should also be a young amethyst winged lion. Floating behind Xiao Yan, Yao Lao said with a smile. Xiao Yan's rushing footsteps suddenly paused and the corner of his eyes twitched. A while later, he viciously said, Damn it. If it dares to hinder me, I will kill it. I don't believe that it is as aggressive as the one outside. With that, Xiao Yan dashed out of the cave with great speed. How courageous! Yao Lao smiled as he watched Xiao Yan's back. Immediately, he added, but you overestimate your abilities. Ha <laughs> ha! When Xiao Yan successfully exited from the tunnel, he turned around and dashed towards the other tunnel. Knowing that there was a young amethyst winged lion, Xiao Yan was extra careful. When he walked, he did not even dare to randomly step on the stones on the ground. After walking along the tunnel for a short while, the sight before him widened. Xiao Yan leaned tightly on the cave entrance as he slowly scanned the interior of the cave that was covered by amethyst stone. When his scanning eyes reached the middle part of the cave, it gradually stopped. Here, a small-sized amethyst winged lion laid on the ground in a creeping position and was quietly sleeping. Seeing the sleeping small-sized amethyst winged lion, Xiao Yan swallowed his saliva and wiped the cold sweat on his forehead. Ha <laughs> ha! This young beast is only rank 3. Go on. Behind him, Yao Lao joking voice quietly sounded. Chapter 140, Obtaining the Amethyst Essence Rank 3 Hearing this, Xiao Yan wiped the cold sweat off his face. Even with the dochi that Yun Ji had left in his body, he would not be able to finish off this young amethyst winged lion with its abnormal defense. Tightly pressing his eyebrows together, 
Xiao Yan stared at the young amethyst winged lion lying on the ground. After worrying for a moment, he turned his gaze towards Yao Lao and probed, Why doesn't teacher kill that little thing? I've said before that once you enter the Magic Beast Mountain Range, you will have to rely on yourself. Unless it comes to a life or death situation, I will not help you. Yao Lao smiled as he gently swayed above Xiao Yan's head. Damn, you are heartless. Xiao Yan's eyelids twitched as he pointed his middle finger at Yao Lao before helplessly mumbling, I don't believe that I cannot get rid of it. You don't really intend to directly try to finish it off, do you? That guy may not appear very large, but when it comes to combat strength, it is one of the strongest amongst the rank 3 magic beasts. With your little body, even if you used the de rank do technique, you would still be hard pressed to kill it. Yao Lao said, a warning tone in his voice. I would only take him head on if I was an idiot. Xiao Yan leaned against a rock wall and sat down. From his storage ring, he took out a large number of things and began flipping through them. Finally, he took out a pale purple fruit and a bottle of green liquid. Purple smoke fruit. Seeing the pale purple fruit in Xiao Yan's hand, Yao Lao softly said, Ha, you seem to be quite well adapted to actually recall that a fire-type magic beast loves this thing. The purple smoke fruit was a special fruit that could be found in the Magic Beast Mountain range. As this fruit contained a little fire energy in it, it was well loved by many kinds of fire-type magic beasts. Ignoring Yao Lao, Xiao Yan once again removed a hollow tube with a crystal needle and stuck it in the bottle of green-colored liquid. Afterwards, he extracted some of the green liquid and carefully injected it into the fruit. With a light squeeze, the green-colored liquid was poured into the fruit. Oh, you are thinking of using poison? That amethyst-winged lion has quite a strong immunity. With the poisons that you have created, do you think you can cause it to collapse? Seeing Xiao Yan's action, Yao Lao could not help but ask with a suspicious tone. Who said that this was poison? Xiao Yan licked his mouth and chillingly laughed, this is a strong laxative that I created. As long as it eats it, I am certain that it will have to go the bathroom non-stop regardless of how strong its immunity is. Tisk tisk. To think you still have this up your sleeve. But you should not underestimate the intelligence of a rank 3 magic beast. It may not be as smart as the one outside but its intelligence is something that cannot be compared with a rank 1 or 2 magic beast. It would not eat things of unknown origins. Yao Lao gave Xiao Yan a thumbs up before speaking. Doesn't eat it. Ha ha. That isn't up to him. Regardless of how one puts it, a beast is a beast. Xiao Yan grinned and took out another bottle of red-colored liquid from his storage ring. When he opened it, a great fragrance that caused one's stomach to rumble came floating out. Just as the smell began to spread, Xiao Yan hurriedly replaced the cap and sneakily said, This is the liquid from an anorexia flower. As long as it is inserted into the purple smoke fruit, I don't believe that that little beast would be able to resist the allure of delicacy. Watching Xiao Yan repeatedly taking things from his storage ring, Yao Lao was somewhat speechless. Xiao Yan's interesting choices in refining medicine were both funny and annoying. His body slightly drifted and asked again, even if it ate the fruit, your plan would fail if it clears its bowels here. I have taken a look inside and did not find any dirty magic beast feces. Additionally, I did not find it anywhere else along the way here. I think that the amethyst winged lions has a habit of cleanliness. A magic beast that is actually particular about cleanliness? How strange, also, please stop asking questions. This plan is just an impromptu thought, so how can it be perfect? It is difficult to say whether or not it will work. After saying those words, Xiao Yan ignored Yao Lao's questions as he transferred about seven or eight tubes of the green-colored liquid before adding the anorexia flower juice. Only then did he stop. He tossed the heavy fruit in his hand and smiled. Once he returned everything to his storage ring, he gently placed the purple smoke fruit at the entrance to the cave. Xiao Yan placed the fruit properly and jumped off the ground, his body shooting towards the ceiling of the tunnel. Using an intense suction force on both hands, 
he firmly nailed his body to the rock wall. Almost immediately after the purple smoke fruit was placed at the cave entrance, a fragrant scent was slowly emitted. With the help of the wind, this scent began spreading into the cave. The small amethyst winged lion's nose twitched as it sucked deeply in. When the first whiff entered its stomach, a deep noise sounded from the young amethyst winged lion's stomach. It slowly opened its beast eyes and shook its large head around the spacious cave, searching for the source of the fragrance. After the search went on for a moment, the young amethyst winged lion finally found the target. It lazily stood up and let out a low roar from its huge mouth before it opened its steps and strolled towards the cave entrance. Arriving at the cave entrance, the young amethyst winged lion's nose sniffed at the purple smoke fruit. Instantly, it lifted its head and swept an alert gaze across its surroundings. It then extended its large paw and gently touched the purple smoke fruit. A short silence later, it waved its tail, turned around and left. Through a small crack, Xiao Yan watched the young amethyst winged lion turn around to leave and could not help but sigh in disappointment. It seemed like the alertness of this little thing was higher than what he had thought. Just as Xiao Yan was planning of thinking of another plan, the young amethyst winged lion which had walked for around half the distance to the spot it had rested suddenly turned around again. It dashed to where the purple smoke fruit was, extended its tongue and swallowed it. Seeing its action, Xiao Yan finally heaved a long sigh of relief. He whispered, Damn it! Even I almost ended up eating it. I knew you would eat it. After eating the purple smoke fruit, the young amethyst winged lion once again laid down on the beautiful ground made of amethyst stone. A moment later, it suddenly stood up as its stomach made a muffled rumbling noise. It swept its gaze around the interior and under the relieved gaze of Xiao Yan, finally dashed towards the cave entrance and out of the tunnel at an extreme speed. It succeeded. Seeing the young amethyst winged lion disappear, Xiao Yan could not resist letting out a joyful cry. He leapt down from the ceiling and seizing every minute, hurried into the cave interior that was covered with amethyst stones. Standing in the interior of the cave, Xiao Yan took out the crystal that was beginning to turn hot. He held it in his hand and using its temperature as a direction indicator, slowly moved in the cave filled with amethyst rocks. After moving around the cave for a long while, Xiao Yan's footsteps finally came to a stop at the spot where the young amethyst winged lion had rested. He slightly lowered his body and extended his hand, lightly knocking on the tents of amethyst stones near him. When his finger knocked on an amethyst stone that was leaning on one side, it instantly emitted a hollow sound. Xiao Yan was slightly surprised when he heard the sound. With great speed, he groped and pulled the slate. A purple light burst out, forcing Xiao Yan to hurriedly close his eyes as the light pierced his eyes. After waiting for the pain in his eyes to subside, Xiao Yan once again gradually opened them. His gaze swept onto the small hole. In it was a fist-sized purple-colored spirit stone that was oddly sharp. A bright light flowed on top of the purple-colored spirit stone, giving it a beautiful appearance. Upon the appearance of this sharp purple-colored spirit stone, the crystal in Xiao Yan's hand grew as hot as fire. Immediately, Xiao Yan hurriedly stored the crystal into the ring and carefully took the purple-colored spirit stone from within the small hole and also stored it into the storage ring. Having obtained the purple spirit crystal, Xiao Yan restored the hole to its original condition. Following that, he got up and made a mad dash towards the tunnel's exit. He continued running through the long tunnel and finally reached the intersection. Xiao Yan stood there and alertly scanned his surroundings. A crazy happiness appeared on his face as he once again rushed with all his might towards the cave that led to where the amethyst lion birth essence was. After running for a long while, a familiar cave entrance appeared. Xiao Yan hurriedly stopped his advance and carefully checked the cave's interior before reassuringly entering it. He sped towards the stone table where the amethyst lion birth essence was and greedily stared at the purple-colored ball. Within it was a large amount of energy that was sufficient to help the young amethyst winged lion be promoted by one rank. Even if he could not absorb all of it, it would be sufficient to raise his strength by a few stars. Upon thinking of the superb effect that this thing brought, Xiao Yan's body trembled slightly. 
he flipped his hand prompting the sharp purple spirit crystal to appear in his palm. Swallowing his saliva, Xiao Yan stared intently at the purple-colored round ball and voiced the uncertainty in his heart, Do I just smash it apart? I think so, I've never tried it. Yao Lao's uncertain voice sounded from within the ring. If anything goes wrong, I'll come after you. Yao Lao's uncertain voice immediately caused Xiao Yan to become a little perturbed. However, the situation did not allow him to give more thought. He tightly held the purple spirit crystal and violently knocked it onto the purple-colored ball. Crack, the purple spirit crystal knocked against the tip of the round ball. After a brief silence, a crack line surfaced on it. A moment later, the crack line spread and the ball broke into pieces with a bang. Immediately after the amethyst lion birth essence broke, a purple-colored liquid began to flow out from it, wetting half of the stone table. Hurry, hurry. Use the jade bottle to store the purple-colored liquid. This is the amethyst essence. Eyeing the liquid flowing out, Yao Lao hurriedly yelled. As Yao Lao's voice died off, Xiao Yan, who had felt a great heartache, quickly took out some jade bottles from within the storage ring and used all his effort to pour the purple liquid into them. Although the amethyst lion birth essence outer shell was extremely hot, the liquid in it was abnormally warm. Despite the outer shell's large size, the amount of this warm purple liquid it contained only allowed Xiao Yan to fill up six jade bottles. After dropping the last drop of the amethyst essence into the bottle, Xiao Yan glanced at the liquid that was spilled over the stone table. His mouth shivered at the heartache he felt. He stared at it for a moment before he suddenly pounced onto the stone table and licked up all the amethyst essence in the small depressions on the table under Yao Lao's shocked expression. Damn it! You're really stubborn! Looking at Xiao Yan's manner, the speechless Yao Lao mimicked Xiao Yan's language as a curse exploded from his mouth.